finish this now. I wish I had power like that. I know, I know. Training isn't worthwhile if you get killed while doing it. I was just getting warmed up. Whew. That thing was pretty strong. You just wanted something good to train on. I'm not in it just for myself. If I get stronger, I'll be more helpful in your battles. This counts towards the repayment of my debt. But you don't deny at least part of it was for yourself. Of course not. Every true swordsman wants to train so they can improve themselves. It might be a little late to ask, but what debt exactly are you repaying, Rokuro? My sword is my life. When I was separated from it, Velvet told me where to find it. Also, she broke me free from a 500-year-long prison sentence. You say that like it's an afterthought. And that's why I can't fully trust you. I don't follow. Us Rangetsu men are renowned for our sense of duty and commitment. Actually, now that you mention it, Rangetsu's a pretty unusual last name. I heard your family specializes in unconventional swords and fighting styles. That's true. Our ancestor was a swordsman from way off in another country who came to this land a long time ago. A foreign swordsman, huh? I guess that explains why your swords and techniques stand out so much. He had quite a hard time getting by in this unusual land, until he was taken in by an aristocratic family. Ever since, the Rangetsu clan has accepted the rule of their benefactors, and has served them in repayment of their debt. Served them... as bodyguards? Bodyguards, assassins, spies, body doubles... Whatever the order, your family will carry it through. Always return that which you've borrowed, even if you must repay it with your life. That was our ancestors' creed. In truth, four of my five older brothers are dead. You have to admit, we take our sense of duty seriously. Yeah. All right, I get it. That seems to be the case. Oh, come on, that's not fair. Welcome back. That must have been hard work. How does marble curry sound to you? I also have our specialty peach pie on hand. We had a deal. Spill it. <laughs> ah, 
Shepherd Artorius has gone north, up the Danan Highway, at the Abbey's newest temple, the Empyrean's throne. He is expected to be there for a while. Are they relocating there? In a sense, yes. They're holding a ritual to move the seat of the Empyrean in Nominat. In Nominat. In other words, the Abbey's new god. It is a very serious affair, so I imagine Melchior will be there along with the other High Exorcists. Suits us fine. I might even find him there. That will do. Somewhere in there we'll find a chance to strike. Perhaps. But be aware that security near the throne is on high alert. We'll manage to get through. No, you won't. You may be able to fool the guards, but there's no tricking the barrier they've put up. They've used arts to erect a giant wall, keeping outsiders away. But they have to get through themselves. That implies some sort of key, right? Yes. In fact, one of our people is looking into that as we speak. However, I'm afraid... <laughs> It'll cost us. You learn quickly. And here's the bill. Okay, now we're really not being nice. Consider it done. Aren't you going to ask why you have to kill a high priest? I imagine it's because he's the one controlling the nectar supply. The Church is the sole producer and distributor of a highly addictive substance. They rake in huge profits, while the common man, along with your people, suffer for it. You noticed your tasks were related. That was the real test, wasn't it? And you passed. No matter how skilled you are, you have to know more than how to swing a sword to earn my trust. Don't misunderstand my intentions. I ditched my scabbard long ago. I see. So you are the embodiment of a bear blade. A more formal introduction is in order. I am Tabitha Baskerville. Leader of the Bloodwing Butterflies. I'm Velvet. Tell me about the High Priest. Each evening, he prays for protection from calamity at the royal villa on the Castle Logris grounds. Tradition holds that the High Priest should be alone for the prayer. How do we get into the villa? Carry this insignia with you, and allies of the Bloodwings will offer you their aid. We'll hold up our end. Just find out about that key. Ah, <sighs> uh, Velvet? Are you okay? It's nothing. But you seem... I said it's nothing! Uh -huh. Sneaking into the castle will be an all-night job. Let's take this time to get everything ready and then rest at the tavern. Yeah. High Priest Gideon will be alone at night. The Shadow Guild. Operates this tavern. The red scarf is a symbol of the Bloodwing butterflies? Aye. You seem to know a lot. Show that insignia to a person in a red scarf, and they'll help you out. If nectar made from vermilion ore is so bad for your health that it was banned, why are they making it? They make it because it was banned. Huh? Just because the powers that be say a rule is for the greater good, it doesn't mean that everyone will see eye to eye with them. If Tabitha's Mabo curry was outlawed, would you really be able to never eat it again? I wouldn't like it, 
But if it's against the rules... Uh... <laughs> well, you'll get hungry no matter what. People want what they want. But anything forbidden is bound to be rare. And when things are rare, they become expensive. So that's why people make it. The world isn't a simple place. There's an underside to everything. An underside? Contract killers, secret weapons dealers, loan sharks that charge outrageous interest, pirates like me, the folks who offered us mooring for information, and the gilded helivies are all part of it. As are the people who dye chicks blue to sell them at a higher price. And the people who bet on alleyway bug fights. <gasps> and they'll come to you with a smile, so you can't let your guard down if you want to stay safe. What sorts of bugs do they make fight? That's the part that got your attention. We know for a fact that Captain Eifried was on the prison island for a period of time. And it's true that Melchior took him away. However, I'm afraid that is where the trail grows cold. In any case, we can be sure that the Abbey has him captive. But what could they possibly want with him? If their aim is merely to fight piracy, they'd publicly execute him, or try to lure you out, would they not? And yet they've done neither. Total silence. I wonder... Could it be they want to get their hands on the relics some say Eifried brought back from the far continent? The relic from across the sea? Have rumors of that strange thing been going around? It's possible. There was a certain relic that the captain was curiously taken with. Kept it safe. What was it? That's our business. I'll speak no more of it. But if that's truly what they're after, I highly doubt the villa is where they're keeping him locked up. That's not where they keep their torture implements. Quite true. At any rate, I thank you for sharing what secrets you could. I wish you the best of luck on your search for more information. Survival is at stake. An elder sister eating her brother before he inexorably wastes away is not outside the bounds of reason. You needn't hold back, Velvet. Eat, Lafayette. No! No! The hell with you! You and your disgusting words! <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Why? You were... You were shouting. Be more careful around me! You know full well I'm a demon! I'm sorry. <laughs> Damn. Awake or asleep, it's all one long nightmare. Smashing objects together is destruction. Smashing feelings together is life. But objects, tools, so much easier to abuse and toss aside. What does that mean? It means break time is over. Time to get to work, sweetie. Good thing I showed up in time. Don't tell me you're coming too. Sojourn alongside the gloomy demon lady, and the exorcist controlling Bienfu is sure to appear. I told my own fortune, and there it was. Do your fortunes actually hold water? I've been in the castle before, you know. 
How useful to have Magilu along, they said in the future. Get in my way, and I'll give you the boot. It's the Viper's Nest. They're always watching. Yes, but therein lie shadows, too. Let's see your papers. Checks out. This tunnel over here connects to the castle. It should put you inside the villa. favorite meal is witches. All right, onward and inward. Everyone but Mogilu tread carefully. Some assassin's crew we are. The Bloodwings are a serious organization. I'm impressed that they know about this entrance. And they have agents on the inside to facilitate this little operation, too. They must have branches working all over the Empire. Here's a juicy morsel about them. They make sure even their corpses go to good use. They what? Long ago, one of their agents stole into the castle. When the guards discovered him, they chased him to this very passage. He dove into the water to escape, and then... CRUNCH! Crocodile devoured him in one massive bite. All that remained was his arm, bobbing to the surface. From this, two important facts were learned. What were they? First, they learned of the existence of this passage. Second, they could serve crocodile meat in town. Crocodile meat rubbed with human blood becomes tender and succulent, perfect for Mabo curry. Then I ate... If it's so tasty, I'll have to try it. Rubbed with the blood of a lying witch. That would hit the spot, I think. And it wouldn't even affect our combat strength. Hey, the kid's a wreck. It was just a joke to help calm him down. It was... a joke? Yeah, I totally made up that part about the crocodile. Mabo curry is actually made from man-eating catfish who... <laughs> Let's keep moving. Right. I'll get you for this, witch killers! Look, the water level dropped. You don't think there are any alligators down there, do you?
They were nothing. supposed to be protecting the people from demons, but there are demons right under their noses. Abbey security is certainly lacking here. The whole point of building those massive walls around the city is to keep people safe inside. But if there's a demon outbreak on the inside, those same walls will make it harder for everyone to escape. The palace covers a lot of ground, so there are tons of hiding places. It wouldn't be hard for a demon to slip in through the waterway. I'm sure the Abbey is aware of that. Perhaps it's a trap made to lure intruders in. What? They lure demons in and then ignore them? Something doesn't add up. I know, right?
We need to get through here while it's still nighttime. The perfect place for prognostication. Eeny teeny spiny crow. Which way, which way shall we go? Mogilu. Oh, verily the icy glare of death. Boy, which way do you think is best? I. <laughs> There must be a way up somewhere. Let's find it. <laughs> uh... Why so glum, Velvet? The thought of killing a man weighing heavy even on your own damaged conscience? Not especially. But I wonder how you remain so flippant about it. Hey, I'm not here to murder anyone. I'm just tagging along in search of my traitor. <clears throat> Do we have to kill him? Can't we just make him stop this nectar business? I don't think he'd listen to us. Huh? Word in the taverns is that this high priest is a real shady character. The Abbey and the religion are popular now, but three years ago, no one had heard of them. High Priest Gideon was the one who led the church through those dark days. But once Malachim became visible to the general public, and they learned how effective Moloch arts were against demons, that all changed. Humans are such fools, only believing what they can see with their own eyes. And once the church had attained popular support, a nasty power struggle swept through the ranks. Many vied for the mantle of high priest, charlatans, power-hungry converts, but they all faded away. They left the church? No, they all met their maker, some from disease, others from accidents. And in the end, Gideon became high priest. He may be the head of the church, but the people clamor for Shepherd Artorius. That's got a sting. Either way, if we're to face him, he might have some tricks up his sleeve. It doesn't matter who he is. We just do our job.
Thank you.